Hey, uh, Chris, you are the product of uh, uh, parents that no longer were together. At some point in your youth, they separated. Did it was it difficult? Did you have any say on whose whose house you lived at? No, you know what? They got divorced at such a young age for me. I think I was probably a year and a half old, so I don't really know any different. And uh, those decisions were made uh, uh, by someone else. Okay. Well, there's uh, apparently this is the newest uh, situation as we're heading into a possible second uh, wave here of COVID-19. Uh, we are hearing from lawyers that they're seeing an increase in teenagers looking to switch households. They, they want to find out who uh, has the best rules when it comes to lockdown during this pandemic. And as teenagers will do, they're, they're sussing the situation out to see which household would be best for them if we, you know, get into a situation where we're locked down again. Alyssa Bach has been on the show before. She's associate lawyer at Shulman and Partners, LLP. Alyssa, you've uh, had an increase of volume in calls from parents asking what to do uh, with these teenagers that are basically shopping to find out which parent's house is the best for them. W give us an example of, of what you're hearing and how much these calls have increased in volume. Hi, Kelly. Yeah, it's definitely something that we're seeing an increase in, especially coming out of the first wave, going into a potential second wave. You have these teenagers who have been stuck, confined in one home, um, maybe trying to reassess that parenting arrangement and looking at uh, a new change in scenery for them and also the level of restrictions. And so that's the calls that we're getting is from parents and how to deal with those requests when you have your teenager saying, look, I'm going to be more comfortable with the other parent. And then the parents looking at, okay, is this change in their interest? How much deference are we giving to their opinion? And how are we dealing with all of the other implications that are going to come up because of this request. You know, divorces can get really ugly and so can uh, custody of kids. How many uh, calls are you getting from the other side and the parents that don't have custody that say, you know what, my kids expressed interest. They want to come live with me full time. Yeah, so that's um, something that I haven't in particular seen as far as um, the, the other side saying, look, I'm having this expressed. But I, I imagine that it's something that's going to come up coming into this second wave because when you have your teenager expressing to you i'm going to be more productive in this house or that there are genuine reasons why they're having specific tensions right and you see that with with families right now it's, it's maybe not anything um, to, to fault anybody for but just being stuck in the same house um, for long durations of time not having the same social interactions getting that change and what you need to look at too is is it a temporary switch that they're looking for or is it something that's going to be a more permanent switch and with teenagers in particular why it's uh, so important and where uh, it changes as opposed to younger children is that one of the things that the courts look out for is views and preferences of the child and the older your child gets so when you're getting into those teenage years the more deference their views and preferences are given. So unless there's concrete evidence that they're not going to do well in the other home, then you want to look at how can that transition be accommodated. Given what we've seen from the courts during the pandemic, do they tend to side with stricter parents? And that's where it's, it's not necessarily a matter of, um, a change in strict versus lenient, right? Because you, you also have to consider safety implications. When we say teenagers are looking to change homes to try and parent shop to the more lenient home, it's also still within safe parameters, right? It's not a matter of this parent is going to let me have a party with all of my friends in contravention of government regulations, but just having um, perhaps a little bit more freedom in the household in particular. And the courts um, themselves, encouraging parents to stay out of the courts, not bringing this to litigate before a judge, because again, the judges are looking at um, best interests, which includes the views and preferences, but also the other individual factors of each family, right? Are parents available to still be there during the day to support the teenager 
Um, are there going to be implications with schooling? Do the parents live close enough that if your teenager is doing in-person classes that they don't have too much of a commute? Are they doing online learning where they're going to have those supports at home? So there are a lot of factors that are being taken into consideration. And it's something that um, ideally you don't want to end up in court because there's going to be a delay in that in any event. And so trying to mediate, negotiate, work together to find a solution that everybody can adjust to. Right. And child support payments would change depending on where the kids uh, decide to reside. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest issues that comes up because when you've got a teenager, in some situations, that parenting arrangement has been in place for a number of years. And the parent who's receiving support, if they've been receiving it for a number of years and reliably receiving it, that's, uh, those are funds that they could have budgeted into their monthly expenses, but the exp- um, funds that they rely on each month coming in. And so when you look at a change in those uh, parenting arrangements, Uh, Not only would that parent no longer be receiving the support, but they could now be the parent paying the support. And that creates a whole different affordability issue and trying to sort out, okay, how do we reassess finances um, if if there is this change in, in living arrangements for the child? It's such a strange time for everyone. But you say when you're dealing with teenagers, you should be doing what you can to make them happier during this pandemic and ease their anxiety. Yeah. And so that's where, again, right now, there's a lot of tension in in families uh, with people in general. And when you have a teenager where especially um, more extroverted teenagers where they're used to having those regular social interactions, if you're all of a sudden in a home doing your schooling, your work, your social time all in the same place, looking at how can we make them the most productive, making sure that they're going to do well. And that's where you want to try and get to, if, if these requests are coming up, trying to get to the root of why they're asking for it as well. Is it a matter that um, you can engage counselors to see, um, are there alternate solutions that aren't just a move from the home, but um, that can address uh, why they're requesting the move? I want to just uh, quickly just pivot to something else. Uh, we're we're heading into the second wave. Uh, so we had uh, a summer where the numbers went down. Did, did the numbers as far as divorce go up after that first lockdown? And what are you seeing now about people inquiring about maybe ending relationships with partners that they just have realized it's just not going to work anymore? Yeah, I, I will say that we've definitely seen an increase in the volume of calls generally uh, with respect to separation coming out of the first wave and going into the potential second wave and just calls about um, tips on separating and what factors are going to come into play. Um, and and it, it's understandable, again, that when you're with somebody through COVID, it's, it's a new uh, circumstance that we haven't had to deal with before. And so it's testing relationships in new ways. And in some cases, it is leading to contemplation of separation. Alyssa, thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate your time. It's uh, not something uh, I w- that was even on my radar before you started talking about it, the fact that some teenagers are looking to switch households ahead of this uh, possible second wave. Um, but it is something to be aware of, especially if you have a child, uh, you know, and, 